But I can't read no better than you can, Brown Dog, but that big word ought to stand for horse race, because the numbers underneath mean $300 in prize money, which I will collect this day, rain or shine. Brown, you hear me, Brown? Listen to all that whooping and hollering, Brown. Brown, you ain't paying attention. I fail to see how you're gonna augmentate your reputation as man's best friend just laying in there out of the wet. While everybody's celebrating, Brown. I don't know how to saddle you up for the race, you big dumb cub. Nothing but skin around appetite anyway. Come on, dog, a ride. Rage coming, Brown! That's a fine dog. Yes, sir, one man dog. Name's Brown. He is yours, isn't he? More the other way around. He's kind of his own dog. Picked me up to feed him. Well, take him off your hands if you're tiring of the expense. No, thank you. Ten dollars. Nope. Fifty dollars, cash in hand. You want a drink before you go? Yeah. You must be awful flush. You gonna be once the race is over. Ooh. Seems I heard that previously. Well, I'm odds on to win anyway. Care to buy a quirt before you go. All right. All right, I can't be faulted for trying. Can I, old dog? Hello, Digger. Burgundy. Hey, Digger, do you know I did Blossom Game? Yep. Hmm. 
You figure maybe to grab the laurels in this here upcoming contest of speed, horse flesh, and dirt eating ability? Can you win? Win the race? Ain't unlikely. Uh huh. Now, do you consider Mr. Blassingame uh, oh, a skilled manipulator of equine species? Well, he can ride, son. Jack fancy mouth. Figure. Figure, how'd you like to make 20? Do I have to push like somebody? Nothing that morally blemished. I just want Mr. Blassingame to lose. The way he talked, he's got a pile bet on himself. No, I just prefer seeing him stony. Just for malicious? I never spend money for the sake of malice. No, I just want to see Mr. Blassingame in a precarious financial condition because he has something that I mean to have. What? A splendid specimen of Canis familiaris. A dog digger. A dog. run like blazes to your horses. Mount up, ride around this here block for all your worth. Now you remember, it's every man for himself and no holds barred. Good luck, Dave. All right now, simmer down. Get ready, and may the best man win. Yeah, put in there. Well, I wouldn't take advantage. The offer's a hundred for the dog. No, I lost him one time. I got card chucked on ace high flush. And I put near busted the gut getting him back. That dog takes off again. He's just gonna have to leave on his own. 125. <laughs> <laughs> No sale? <laughs> no sale. All right. One on the consummation still devoutly to be wished. What's that, poetry? Badly spoken by a lover of the muse. An unsuccessful practitioner of his own line of enterprise. Where's your line? We're buying dogs. <laughs> Yukon weekday would make this look like a Sunday social in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, well, it's early yet. Come sundown, man. Foot can't see over the bodies in the street. Hey, 
Hey, what do you want with them dogs? Sled dog. Good one will fetch over a hundred in Frisco or Seattle. Well, that Brown, uh, he's a lead dog if ever saw one. He's just big enough and strong enough to whip all the others into shape. That's Brown. Hey, he's smart enough to smell rotting ice and to steer clear of avalanche. Oh, he's top dog all the way. It's him. Probably good it does me. Did I, I ever tell you about the Yukon? Well, not in the half hour I've known you. Else knows the meaning of the word. Why? I recall Patsy Dillon's wife. She flying up, along that bucket of water at him, and it turned to ice in midair. And the coroner's verdict was accidental death caused by a blow from a blunt instrument. cooking stove. We keep the chickens right in the house. Come barbecuing time, we just stuff them up with corn and throw them out in the yard. And in about 10 minutes, the sun sets the feathers off, the corn is cooked, the chickens are stuffed, the corn is ready for popping. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Did you... Tell of wind? Wind, sure. When is this thing that moves cattle all the way across Texas between breakfast and sundown? That ain't wind. When I'm in the Yukon, that's not even a breeze. You know, up north, it ain't even called wind. Unless it's documented. 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 It's packing along at least. Two full grown glaciers. Brandy, you wrecked my piano. I can't make it play anymore. Look what you've done to it. You like music? I love music. My name is Burgundy Smith. Wolves tremble when I holler. The mention of my name strikes fear into the souls of the most intrepid men. The home of the rattlesnake. It's a song that I sing as I rip and I rah, and I tar. I live to this spread wrath. I am terrible in my cups, and I am horror of foot when soaked. 
I... King. Well, I am the man who cut the thunder. And I had to the height of a howling glider. I'm still feeding in the flesh and full brother to the collar. Mortals! Mortals! you turn me loose. I didn't turn you in. I can't turn you out. Sheriff Tom does the turning. He ain't here. Listen, there's a man out there walking off with my dog right now. Brown. Oh, where are you, dog? Come on. It's time to go. He tricked me. Woke up and found this thing on me. There's money in that thing. What is it? Brown. Why, Brown? Reseated bill of sale for one large brown dog. I don't want the money, I want my dog, Brown. Brown? Brown! 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 Yeah, boy. Smith, you're a dead man! Brown, get away from that man, you hear me? Sheriff! Sheriff! Now I'm gonna bust this hotel wide open, you hear? And I'm gonna bust you wide open. I'm gonna bust Mr. Mason and Sheriff open. You him? Yep. Where in the long, long time have you been? Out. I know that, but what am I being held for? He won't say nothing except he's waiting for Sheriff Tom. All right, you're here, and I'm here, and I want out of here. You hear? I want out. I want to get out, out, out! <laughs> oh, Brown. You lo you're looking for blood? All right, you're going to find it all over me. You don't move faster. Now, please, dog. I got to be teetotally someplace else. Would you tell me what I'm being held for? The man said as to how the new bull place was held up by you. A man. Was it a man named Burgundy Smith? That's right. He stole my dog. And the new bull place ain't lost a dime. Well, then, could you see your way clear to put that key in that lock and open that door and let me out of here? Is this yours? Yes, sir, that's mine. Yes, that is mine. I've never seen this light before. What's the... Uh... That's a 405 Winchester, Sheriff, and it'll kill anything as far as you can see it. Is it for sale? No, sir, it ain't for sale. Kill him out of my jurisdiction, if possible. Shad rat me, shot me bed in go, you miserable creature of caprice. Come back, you! You lousy hound of hellfire. He's gonna clean my plow, boy. He's gonna turn me every which way but loose. Are you coming? No! Smith! Deal my dog, will you? Oh, you did it, Brown. You have surely fixed this Smith wagon. I paid you 150 gold. He's mine. He's mine. Pull a gun, Burgundy Smith. You egg swallowing, dog stealing, chicken That's livered bottom beer. No account, fiddle footed. Now, now, wait a minute. I grant you that your peeve is not 
entirely without reason. Now, wait a minute. Say, uh, uh, 200 for the dog? I'm gonna top you, Smith. You steal my dog, I'm gonna feed you your ears. I furnished a due bill of sale. Well, you try and keep him. I will. Uh. Hold up there, horse. Wait for a burgundy. No, you don't. Get out. Come back here, you miserable mangy cayuse. Come back here. Gotcha, Smith! Coward! Be careful, blazing game. Blazing game. <laughs> I'm losing my patience, Dave. You've gone too <laughs> I didn't think so.
Margaret. Where do you figure that is? Lafayette. That's why. That's home. My home. That's where my daddy lives, and that's where my sisters live, and that's where my mother lies fly covered in her grave. That's home to me, Marsha Kennedy. But that's not my home, Margaret. It was, and it could be again. If you had one lick of common sense and a teaspoon of patience. Now, I am my own man, and not some field hand for your daddy to patronize and pat on the head while he puts food in my mouth and clothes on my back. Don't say no more. You're right, you're so very right. You are a rancher in the great territory of Arizona, and I'm your wife, and I'm here to stay. I would appreciate it if Mrs. Margaret Kennedy would get up on her own two feet and clean up this mess. I'm sick of cleaning and cooking and washing and being lonesome every day. All day, 15 months. Oh. <laughs> what? Why don't you hire me some help? I hired me a man today. He's a friend of your Uncle Henry's who is waiting outside for you as of this very moment. Oh, oh Margaret, you're going to put on some clothes? Oh, Uncle Henry! My, it's good to see you, Maggie Lee. If you knew, if you just knew. You lonesome? Oh, as a coyote, not a face, not a friendly look for months and months and months. <laughs> I don't think you're going to uh, like working here. It's not much like breaking horses. Um, how'd you happen to meet up with Uncle Henry, cowboy? Oh, well, somebody tried to rob him a couple days back, see? So I run the fellow off, and he he told me to ride along with him, because maybe I could get a job here. And I kind of use work. Now, you listen to me, cowboy. I've hired men like you before. They're rolling stones. They're no help. They're often gone, and usually taking something valuable with them. So, when Henry leaves, you leave. Hmm? I'll leave now. Of course, he's staying. Any friend of Uncle Henry's is a special friend of ours. <laughs> Isn't that right, Marsh? Well, now, I was just explaining to Mr. Uh, uh, Blazingame uh, that uh, opportunities on the Kennedy estate are kind of skinny. Hand me those saddlebags, will you, Marsh? I'll pay Dave's wages. Oh, I, uh, I, I can afford to. Ah, double eagles. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Why, Uncle Henry, you've made your fortune. Oh, just a small one, Eddie. Just a small one. Just a small one. <laughs> Uncle Henry, you better chase your gold or Marsh will get away with it. <laughs> now you could you judge. I'm Margaret Lee Kennedy. I'm uh, Dave Blasingame, Miss Kennedy. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Likewise. Well, I might as well show you where you sleep. I like that. He's real strong on sleeping soft. My kind of dog. <laughs> Okay. 
You don't have to leave with Uncle Henry. You could think about staying. Margaret! Oh, that's good whiskey. Let me get you some more, Uncle Henry. Sorry about things not going well for you and Margie Lee. She wasn't brought up to hardship, Marsh. I know that. Uh, can I help you? Well, I guess you could, Uncle Henry. Money? Well, uh, I'd give you $100 now, maybe as much later on. I'd be grateful. I brought you some lunch. Thank you. I want you to stay. Will somebody to talk to? Oh, I'm prepared to go. Preparing to fly far away. Where to? Anywhere, Mr. Dave. Well, what do you want from me, Miss Kennedy? I'll listen, I'll obey. Margie Lee Carson Kennedy, all duty and devotion. You listen now. Whatever you see here is gone. It's over, done, finished. I, I, I don't care a lick about it. What do you care about? Fragrance. Soft rain. Love. Pretty things. Laughing. The fine big knockout dog. Margaret! You think about me, curly headed Dave. You turn me over in your mind. You dwell on me and decide what you're going to do with Margie Lee. Margaret! Well, the boy didn't salute, and the general called him to a halt, and, he, and the general pointed to his, uh, to his braid, and he said, uh, Soldier, don't you see the uniform? And the boy uh, looked at him for a moment. Yeah, he, he allowed that he, that he sees it. And the general roars back, well, what do you intend to do about it? And the soldier said, hell, bud, ain't nothing I can do. Look what they gave me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I contributed my bit to this evening's entertainment. <laughs> Marsh, why don't you and Margie Lee entertain us with a little song? Come on. <laughs> All right, Henry. Go ahead, Margie Lee. Uh, what'll it be? Rich old lady. Rich old lady. There was an old woman in our town, in our town to dwell. She loved her husband dearly, but another man twice as well. She went to the doctor's shop as hard as she could go to see if there was anything she could find to turn her old man blind. She got to wallop in my bones and made her meet them all. He said, oh, my beloved wife, I can't see you at all. Sing tootie dum, sing tootie dum, whack for all the day. Oh, that's very good, Mikey Lee, very good. Well, now, uh, why don't you do that mind-reading act of yours, Mr. Hadley? I never have seen one. Well, I was just waiting to be asked. 
Mind reading? I learned it from a Frenchman in Virginia City. It's, it's mostly tricks, but, but I'm pretty good. I even did an act on the stage in San Francisco. Oh, Uncle Henry, you mean you really can? <laughs> Don't you worry, my dear. I only can when you want me to. <laughs> Just a minute now, Marguerite. I want you to take this Bible, and I want you to open it up and put your finger on any verse. Now, hold your finger there, and you, you read it to yourself, and you think hard now about what you're reading. Uh, that's the, uh, that's the book of Judges, fourth chapter, 17th verse. But Sisera, fleeing, then came to the tent of Yehel. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Henry, l let me try that once, will you? Or right. this time, you turn all the way around. Uh, turn all the way around? <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Any time you're ready. That's the book of Matthew. Then Judas, who betrayed his friend, brought back the 30 pieces of silver, saying, I have sinned in betraying Innocent blood. But the priest said unto Judas, But what is that to us? Look thou to it. Uh, and casting down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself. It's the first time I ever guessed anything without using that Frenchman's trick. Seems like it just came to my head. Well, now, we all know that it was a trick, Henry. Now, we all know that. No. Well, uh, let's forget the whole thing. <clears throat> I certainly did enjoy that dinner, Miss Kennedy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Hasn't been easy, has it, Marshal? Easy? <laughs> no, it, it hadn't been easy. <clears throat> Uncle Henry, how, how'd you make all that money? <laughs> I got a stake selling shoes. I, I put it into mine options, and one of them paid off. Why don't you come back home with me? Both of you. Back home to what? So I can clerk in some store? So I can hold out my hand waiting for some penny squeezers, puny wages? so I can patiently wait on your charities. No, thank you, Uncle Henry. I'm sorry, Marsh. I don't want your pity or your small charity. I want a loan, a decent one. Henry, I want you to invest in this place, in me. It'll pay off. I'll make it pay off. And for security, I'll get 460 acres of sand. Of sand? No, Marsh. No, Marsh, I, uh, I want to rest. And I want to live reasonably well and, and, and not worry. And that takes money. All the money that, that I have. And build you a fine white house and raise you some thoroughbred horses. <laughs> I come out here and I worked myself crazy for over a year, and I got nothing to show for it but dried sweat. And a silly old man picks a lucky number, and inside of three months, he is rich. And then he comes riding through here like God on a sorrel mare, scattering a few coins in front of me and feeling righteous in his largesse. Young man, if you don't want those few coins, I do. I spoke without thinking, Henry. Give me back that money. But I'm asking you for help for Margaret as well as myself. Give me back that money. Why, you mean it, don't you? I didn't. <laughs> Oh, 
was afraid I'd find you gone. Wasn't that foolish? What's the matter? I guess the matter is that ring on your finger, Miss Kennedy. It's passing strange how this particular ring should loom so tall. Makes things kind of uneven, don't it? We're well, even now. We need. It's for me to say, curly headed Dave. And I say we're even. You and I. Here and now. Oh, come on, dog. to you, big dog. You think we ought to leave, huh? Maybe you're right. I think you're right, Brown. Pity is what I have for us. Sad, tired pity. I'm just weary to death of me and this place. And you. And I am not only weary, I am sick. I'm sick of your whining. I'm sick of you feeling sorry for yourself. And I am sick of the way you keep looking at that saddle tramp. Well, it's too late, Marsha. I've flown away. I've already gone, and I can't come back. Honey, you can pound me to warm jelly, and it won't make us live together people. Nothing will. You see, Marsha, I'm turning into leather here with you. I'm drying up and dying on you just like everything else. Listen. We go live someplace else, huh? Everything will be better then. It's too late, Marsha. I've already gone. Leave me be, honey. There's nothing left to share. Leave me be. Sun up. No 
goodbye. Go to sleep, dog. Oh, there was a time when he, when he rode proud and sure into my yard. And standing easy would pass the time of day. He said he wanted... He said he wanted me to take care of you. Well, you will. Well, I tell it out of here for a green coast. Well, we can sit easy in the salt air. We'll forget the bad times. I'm going for the law. Are you going to leave me here? You won't come back for me? No. And I can't ride with you? What happened, Mr. Blassengang? You had something, us. Somebody all built up in your mind before I ever got here. Something I ain't, I never was, and I can't be. You think I'm acting improper? You think I should be crying myself dry and draping myself black, don't you? Suddenly I'm a, I'm a widow and I'm supposed to be doing the things that aren't right, not true for me? I don't think anything of the kind. Well, you think about this girl here today. Long. I'll wait for the sheriff with my people. So long, Marguerite. So long, Dave. 